spirituality is an inside job. Then we get this opportunity to bring that love into everything that we do as people. We have to start from within, regardless of whether that flows into a traditional religion or it's like, hey, I just want to focus on love. What does alien life mean to the spiritual context? Does that like break the mold for religion as a whole? Or does it amplify belief? We can create that concrete aspect of who we are and what we believe in. And that can't just be wiped out because something new comes in. We really need to sit with that question. What is it that invokes that feeling of connection to whatever God is for me? Whatever high heart or universe or source, what is it for me? One of the things we've been doing a lot lately is looking at Sui Vera, which is the organization that brings the Heart Leader podcast forward into the world, and how that organization really interweaves into everything that we're doing, from Silent Your Inner Critic to what it does for us and our members, and the role that it plays in the Heart Leader podcast. And it got us thinking, what is spirituality, since Sui Vera is an all-faiths religious organization, what is the meaning of spirituality in the modern world when everything is seemingly digital and COVID really pushed everything into this modern digital era and we have seen the stats and there's like this de-churching of the world that is happening. And the newer generations are saying, look, this tradition doesn't really fit with our lifestyle anymore. And we really want something different. Hey, Heart Leader community, we are so excited. The Silence Your Inner Critic Immersive Retreat is open for early registration. Click the link below to learn more and secure your spot today. So we've sat and we're like, okay, what does that mean for us? How does it fit into what we're doing? And how does it fit for us as people too? And our heart and our mission. I want to talk about that and really not just share our perspective, but ask our audience, what does that mean for you, right? Absolutely. It's a great question. And I think now more than ever, right? We've Religion has been a part of humanity for thousands of years in different ways. But this is really the first time I feel like in human history, at least that we're aware of, that we're all these different aspects of what it means to be a human in the digital world as you're saying, uh, are coalescing. You know, what does it mean to be a human when AI is a part of the world? What does it mean to be human when UFOs are starting to become more apparent? You know, what does it mean to be human when we are able to connect with people all around the world and understand world religions, uh, you know, co different world cultures? And you know, we're able to be best friends with people that we've never even met before. These are parts of humanity that are untapped and humanity is kind of like, well, what do we do with all of this? Yeah. So how does spirituality fit in this modern world? And that's, I'm really excited to dive into this today. Yes. And I love that you brought up UFOs because we do get that question. What does alien life mean to the spiritual context? Does that like break the mold? for religion as a whole, or does it amplify belief, right? And I don't know that there's an answer to that, but I think that it's worth talking about. And all I can do is share my own personal faith journey and where I came from and what led me to where I am now, because what that tells me is None of this is finite. When we go on a journey of belief, if we're open to 
expanding our perspective, then we can, there's no limit to what God, love, the universe, whatever we desire to call what I now call the higher heart, mm-hmm. right? There's no limit to what it can show us about ourselves. And that's exciting. And if alien life is part of that and is part of your belief and you believe that there's potential for that, then what can that show you about you? Why does it have to be that it's going to break your belief? Can it be something that's exciting and can expand your awareness about this amazing universe that the high heart or the universe or source has created? How amazing is that, right? Yeah. And I feel it's it's quite interesting to me that if if we say that there isn't something beyond here, isn't that our limitation on God, creator, source, high heart, however you want to call it? Isn't that our limitation on that, not the other way around? And so we say that God, source, is unlimited with the creative power then then that feels not in alignment so why why would there be a limitation otherwise why would we be the only beings in the amount of stars that we can't even comprehend it's it'd be shocking just in one small little picture let alone i think it's something like five percent of the sky is like there's hundreds of billions of of galaxies and what about the rest? What about the other 95%, right? So, yeah, I mean, this is, this is probably now more than ever the most unique time to start asking, you know, where do I fit? Where do I fit in all of this? You know, as the world is becoming bigger. Yes. It made sense thousands of years ago when there were smaller tribes, right? All, all of these religions and faiths. We're, we're meant to kind of help smaller, smaller groupings of people. And just like when you have a small business and you get things started and maybe you only have five or 10 people or maybe even 20 or 50 people, mm-hmm. you know, it's still considered a small business, even though it might feel like a lot in, 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 your, in the scheme of things for you. But what you do for that you know, 10 to 50 person business isn't what you do. You don't do that exact same thing when you start to get over 1,000 people or 2,000 or 10,000 or something like Amazon that has like over 100,000 people, right? Yeah. You can't, you, they don't fit. You have to evolve. You have to shift. You have to expand. Yeah. And so if you attempt to shoehorn those ideas into a growing atmosphere, uh, there's, things are going to fall apart. And people can be like, this isn't working for me. I see what someone else is doing, and that seems to be working. And I feel like that's exactly what's happening in this state where we have access to pretty much anyone, anywhere in the world at any time. That's a unique space. And then when we start bringing in uh, other types of intelligences, whether it's digital intelligence like AI or possibly physical intelligence like uh, alien or from another dimension or galaxy or however it is, you know, it's like, wow. This is so much. There's so much going on around me. Where do I fit in the grand scheme of things? Yes. It just makes me think, like, if you're talking about Apple, what they were doing in their garage definitely wouldn't fit for how huge in scale Apple is today. Yes. Right? All of those people being shoved into Steve Jobs and Wozniak's like <laughs> little garage just would not work. Everybody would be like, no, I don't want to be a fruitarian. And I'm like, let's go. Yeah, a three trillion um, cap, you know, market cap in a garage. That just doesn't, doesn't that's not work. how that works. <laughs> so we needed the innovation and the ability to get to where we are today. Like we definitely would not be filming on our iPhones if everybody was still stuck in that garage. So the willingness to expand and say, all right, we can do something different, be something different is what led to the innovation that we have today. We need to do the same thing in spirituality whether that's religion spirituality, whether that is belief system spirituality. The whole point of spirituality is to connect us 
to whatever we feel is that that part of us that connects us to the whole, right? Whether, however that is. But it's that love, that love that is within us that connects us to the wholeness of something greater than self, but still self. Mm -hmm. And if it's not doing it for us anymore, if that traditional path is not what is invoking that within us, then it is that time to sit and say, then what will do that? What draws me inward to then connect outward in the best possible version of myself that is the representation of what I now call the high heart, which going back, like we call the Heart Leader podcast where heart and mind align. And part of that discussion was the mind is that human intellect. It's that logic. It's that ability to create and bring this amazing creativity to the world. That heart is our connection to the universe, to the infinite. And so by allowing our heart and our mind to align, we have this amazing opportunity to be that bridge between what what I now call the high heart, that universal heart, and the human aspect of who we are, and share that, right? So to us, and to me specifically, I feel like the ability to bring Sui Vera, that all faiths path, into what we're doing here, that aligning of heart and mind, then we get this opportunity to bring that love into everything that we do as people. We learn how to do that, to be that representation of love in human form, Mm -hmm. in our relationships, in our work, in everything we lead in life. It's a beautiful thing. Yes. Yes. I love that. And I feel like the, the, the most simple, like quickest way to summarize everything you just said is spirituality is an inside job. Yes. And that's, I feel like our opportunity, uh, so much of humanity and in, in the history of humanity has been centered around things outside of self, because as we've talked about many, many times in different podcast episodes, that it's a great way for us to understand where we fit, right? And we see something outside of us and we, we pull that kind of in and say, okay, from something outside to in, this is where I am and this is how I relate to that thing. Uh, or people, or culture, or anything that's outside of self. But now that there is a common ground, and as you're saying, love is that common language between all things, then that line of outside to in kind of starts to get blurred. Because yes. it's like, wow, I'm I'm highly integrated into into the whole world now, not just a small tribe. You know, and so if if I can see you and you can see me and we're all around the world and we do different things, but we're very much the same in a lot of ways. We have all the same core values and, and principles. You know, I just want to be seen, heard, and gotten. I want to be loved. I want to be uh, passionate. I want to have feel safe. And I want to have the basics in life at a minimum just so that I can uh, move forward and experience life in a way that is unique and, and expressive. You know, these are things that I'd say a vast majority of people in some way, shape, or form desire to experience. So what does spirituality mean in this modern world then? To me, I feel like, as you're beautifully, beautifully articulating, it starts from within. We have to start from within, regardless of whether that flows into a traditional religion or it's it could be, hey, there's no religion. I just love different aspects of these major faiths and and I want to practice and and kind of pull it all together because I think there are benefits from each one. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's like, hey, I just I just want to focus on love. I feel like if I'm the most loving person I can be, then that really hits a lot of the, you know, checks a lot of the boxes. Great. And if, even if you're a, a scientist uh, or an atheist, and maybe you may or may not believe, maybe maybe it's non-denominational, or you're saying, "Hey, I don't necessarily believe in in a god. I believe in science or uh, the universe." 
in some ways, I feel like we're all just saying the same things. And, and so if we can start to say, regardless of what's going on outside, when we can pull inside and we can create that concrete aspect of who we are and what we believe in, and we can find that self-truth from within and express that, as you beautifully said, into all things that we do, all things that we are, whether that's through our work, our relationships, uh, you know, our family, our community, uh, the world, the universe, all of it. You know, I think that helps us uh, really create a solid awareness uh, and, a, and a concrete foundation that can't just be wiped out because something new comes in. Hey, Heart Leader family, it's Austin. I'm so excited to share that the early registration for the Silence Your Inner Critic Immersive Retreat is now open. It's October 10th through the 14th of 2024. Click the link below, check it out, and can't wait to see you there. And ultimately, I know from my own trajectory, like I was a little girl. And though my na or my family didn't specifically have a belief system, which was beautiful in itself, their belief system was family. Mm -hmm love our family deeply. Mm -hmm. And that is an expression of faith. But I always had this call to God, if you will, to get closer in some way. So my neighbors were very um, dedicated to church. Mm -hmm. So at a very young age, I was like four or five years old, I would get up every Sunday and go to church with my neighbors. Mm -hmm. Every Wednesday, I would go as well. Like, it was just a draw, an innate thing in me. I was drawn to it. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, that shifted for me. Mm -hmm. And it didn't mean that I didn't still have the same calling. I did. But how I fed that calling changed. Mm -hmm. That specific approach wasn't what fed my calling anymore. And when that shifted for me, it was almost as though I was doing something bad or wrong, which kind of goes into the whole silence your inner critic, right? Because even my inner critic, it was like, well, what's wrong with you? Mm. But I needed to find what fed me, right? And that goes into this whole modern spirituality too, should we be shamed if what is feeding us doesn't stay the same from when we're young to when we move through our teen years, our adult years? Everything else shifts for us, right? So many other things shift for us. I definitely don't still wear onesies. Exactly. <laughs> there are lots of things that I don't do anymore that I used to do when I was younger. Now, that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with that belief system. It was beautiful. It still is beautiful. There's so much that I gained from it. And I still return to it mm -hmm. because there are foundational, fundamental things that still mean everything to me. But I also found expansion by studying other world belief systems and religions. And each time I would find myself being drawn to another one, Vedic philosophy, Buddhism, Taoism, I would immerse myself in each one. And I would gain so much by studying and just diving deep into it. But the one core thing I found through each and every one was love. Love of God or the universe or whatever creation is in that faith, love of self, because self is a reflection of the creation, love of all others, because all others are a reflection of creation and self. And when I kept finding that common language and that common language, it kept expanding me even further and kept expanding my love even further. And that provided me with an opportunity to then say, wow, we really are all speaking the same language. We're just finding different ways to express it. Mm -hmm. And that was such a gift. But I didn't have necessarily a place to be able to share that. So, yeah. 
I, and I know you came at it from a different path. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing it and something that I know the first time we met and we started kind of diving into these things you shared with me and the profundity of it still resonates just as loud uh, 10 years later. So mm. I really appreciate that. It's just a perspective that you don't, he I didn't hear very often. Um, you know, I was always told growing up that if you want to grow as a person, you need to be able to travel. You need to experience other cultures and different foods and uh, different languages. And, you know, the more languages, you know, the more expansive you could become, the more valuable, you know, even as an asset, if you will, like for a business or, you know, you can, ex you can, you can grow yourself through that learning. And I always thought it was odd that that wasn't applied to faith. Yes. Just really, for some reason, I just didn't understand where the disconnect was in that, why it seemed so siloed in that area. And then, you know, in so many other aspects, it was very important to ask questions. You know, I grew up in a, uh, and went to different, these great, great schools, amazing schools, uh, very fortunate to be able to go to them, but they were very religious in, in their approach. And so there was a specific doctrine in which that we needed to follow. We had to go to you know, mass twice a week, every Tuesday and Thursday from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade. And there wasn't a way out of that, whether, no matter what faith you were, like you just, you had to go. And so there were certain things that, you know, in, in classes, whether it was a history class or a science class or everyone was like, hey, ask, ask questions. It's great. You know, that's, it helps you learn. It shows that you're engaging. But when it came to that kind of stuff, I was like, don't ask any questions. And so I, I was like, well, what are, you, what are you telling me? You know, why can't, why can't I learn and grow in this area? And so that really pushed me long term, you know, going to high school where it was very focused on, it was a very religious base. And again, an amazing high school and very close with some of my best friends from high school still to this day. So um, beautiful aspects of it. But it really pushed me to kind of adopt a more atheist approach. Um, because it felt so dogmatic and so repressed and constricted. And I didn't feel that I could be who I desire to be uh, through any of those aspects. And some of the best people I knew were were atheists. And they're like, you know, hey, it was that, that joke, like, hey, you got to trust an atheist because if they're doing something great, they're not, they know they're not getting anything out of it. <laughs> not getting <laughs> into heaven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you know, that, that was a funny way to view it, but it was also like, oh yeah, that's actually, there's, that there actually is very wise. And that made sense. So, um, you know, I went through high school and college from that perspective and, and even outside of college, uh, from that perspective. And, you know, now 10, 15 years later, you know, you know, founding a church with you, you know, if you, if you would have said, Hey, 10, 10 years, 10 years ago, like, Hey, you'd be, you know, founding a church that's in 113 countries with 1.2 million members. I'd be like, no way, no chance. That's, that's crazy. Um, and it was because I just, I, I had, I had such a narrow vision of what, of what it could be, of what even religion meant to me. Because I didn't see, I didn't know there was even a difference between religion and spirituality. And it took that expansion to understand what spirituality is about. In that first understanding that I am not a human on a spiritual journey, but a spirit on a human journey, then that kind of just flipped that script for me and helped me see things from a completely different perspective. And then opened up, wow, you know, all these major faiths, a lot of them are saying great, great things. A lot of them saying aren't great things, you know, and that's, we all have to d make a choice and decide what, what connects and what doesn't, what's relative to now and what isn't. And we're not just seeing this in religion, we're seeing this in politics. I mean, parts, America's only a few hundred years old, right? Compared to thousands of years of different societies. And even now we're like, hey, there are things that we thought a few hundred years ago were great, aren't necessarily working right now. And so it's, it's not just in faith, it's, it's a part of the human experience, I believe. Right. And so if we can learn this from a place of faith and connection and oneness, and I think it can only enhance our ability to express it in other areas, such as politics or business or relationships, uh, et cetera. Yeah. So you mentioned the difference between religion and spirituality. Would you mm. like to expand on that? Because I do think that often 
we link them together mm -hmm. as though they are one and the same. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all I can share is from my perspective, but I, I feel that it's very, the difference is kind of in what I, in how I just described, um, to me, like human is, or uh, religion is, is, is at least for me was the belief that, uh, I was a human on a spiritual journey. Like that to me was, it was very human focused, uh, man-made experience where for me, spirituality is kind of the opposite. It's, it's, um, it's a spirit on a human journey. So it's seeing the universal perspective and applying it into the human ex expression. And so now they can link together. I don't know if they have to be quote unquote opposites. I feel like there is a beautiful opportunity to blend the two together. And in many ways, that's what, that's what life is in and of itself is. It's understanding how to blend the two. And so in one's religion can be so many different things. And we've heard people say that, you know, love is my religion or, you know, Catholicism is my religion or, you know, I don't, I don't know, but I feel like I, I believe in something and whatever that something is, that to me is like, I'm very religious about it. Um, you know, there's, there's a thousand ways to do that, but there are a multitude of ways to be a human too. And so again, why, why the limitation? It's, I feel that it's, it's hum, sometimes humanity's, uh, both humanity's greatest strength and weakness is lim limitation because as a weakness, it can hold us back, but as a strength, it can help us overcome. And by overcoming, we can understand who we are at a greater capacity. And that is so exciting. That's awesome. So in hearing that, would it be safe to say that like religion is the process or the doing where there mm. is, there are things that you can navigate? I often think mm. in, diff in all the different religions that I've taken part in, there are traditions or there are, you know, in Catholicism, there are all of these different programs you can take part in. There is definitely the tradition that you navigate, like communion and things, mm. where in spirituality it's more the being the being of the spirit, the observation that you are more than human mm -hmm. and then taking part in religion to experience that spirit part of yourself. So we always think of like the inverse triangle, right? Mm -hmm. Are you coming from the expansiveness into the singularity or are you coming from the singularity into the expansiveness? Mm. And both, as you said, have their, their defined purpose. But when you are coming at it from the spiritual context, you have the opportunity to witness the purpose. Mm. If you're coming at it from only the religion aspect, you might not be in witness of the purpose because you're looking at it from only one purpose point of view. Mm -hmm. Now, not always, but sometimes we don't get to pull. I can speak for myself until I got to more of the spiritual awareness aspect and I realized my true spirit. I was very focused on I am less than mm -hmm. instead of I am an extension of. Mm -hmm. And that creates Again, the question of what is this modern approach? And if we see ourselves as less than, then again, that inner critic gets in there and keeps preying on that. Mm -hmm. If you are less than, then you will always be less than. Mm -hmm. If you are a part of this hierarchical structure and you are less than, then you will never be more than less than. Mm -hmm where if we get into this, I am a part of, not greater than, but not less than, I am a part of, then there's nothing left for anything to make you feel less than mm -hmm. because you know you are equal to, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I love that. And that's, I feel like you hit on so many incredible aspects of that. I mean, the 
the being and the doing are, are a great way to position spirituality versus religion, for sure. Um, we definitely get caught in being uh, human doings versus human beings. Uh, and so, I, uh, yeah, the tradition, the ceremony, I feel like there's a lot of purpose because it can create community yes. and it can create connection and it can create intention. And these are all wonderful, wonderful things. But I feel like at the same time, what you're saying is that uh, the downside of that is that we can get lost. We can, we can lose ourselves in it. We can see ourselves as less than because we're, we're or stuck or um, constricted in only one way or one approach um, versus a multitude. And so it's, it's hard to say like, you know, are we just this drop of water in the ocean? And so we feel really small. You know, but when a big wave comes, you know, it's like, hey, it's just a bunch of drops of water. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's not like it's a bigger than the one drop. It's just uh, it's a oneness aspect of the drops coming together for a greater impact. You are the ocean Correct. with all the other drops. And that doesn't that doesn't take away from the ocean. No. Right. Not at all. Like the ocean's still the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, and it's there's also that that saying is like it's like saying that there's there's no sharks in the ocean just because you pick up uh, you know a bucket full of water and there's no there's no sharks in in that bucket. It's like that's in some ways that's kind of what we do to ourselves. Right. Is is by when we when we limit ourselves that's kind of what we're doing. We don't know if we don't bring allow ourselves to be a part of the greater whole, then we're not able to see what is all inside that greater whole and how we can actually interact in that. And, and then we can pull from that from so many different ways. And that's why I do love your perspective of, of sharing the high heart. It's not like it is um, higher than it's just it's there's a maybe a frequency or a level in which uh, there is not an assumption that we can't get to it ourselves. Right. And that's that's a that to me is a beautiful thing. It, it creates an opportunity for growth by saying higher heart. It's like, oh, yes, I have something that I can lift up into and to be a part of, not to keep me down and away and separate from. Yes. And it's love. Talk about an ocean. Yeah. It's an ocean of love. And to know that that's an option for me mm. is such a gift. Mm. And I'm so grateful for that. But that's what fits for me. Yes. And that's another part of it is what fits for me isn't what will fit for everyone. And it is not, I have found that it is not my place to force what fits for me onto everyone else. Mm -hmm. Because I know what that felt like and the limitation that it felt for me to create my own personal connection with the universal structure or what many would call God, mm -hmm. then I don't have an opportunity. And when I talk to others and I look at what we're calling this modern spirituality, I feel like that's the greatest disconnect that so many have felt is I have to fit into this context mm -hmm. or I don't fit. And we're not looking for Cinderella's slipper here, right? <laughs> there is no one size that will immediately whisk us off to this magical castle. Glass slippers are uh, very impractical too. <laughs> They're very impractical. <laughs> um, but we really have to design the shoe that will fit us. Yeah. Personally, I like a loafer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want a glass slipper anyway. So... I feel like we just have to have many offerings and be able to create something that will invoke that heart so that we can have our heart and our mind align and bring forward the gifts that we're meant to share as a human. Otherwise, we're attempting to bring forward the gifts that maybe somebody else was meant to share because they're telling us how to be. Well, that's the gifts that they're meant to share because they're the ones who are telling you how to be and that's not going to work because that's the gifts they're meant to share and not the gift you're meant to share. Yeah. Right? So we really need to sit with that question. What 
is it that invokes that feeling of connection to whatever God is for me, whatever high heart or universe or source, what is it for me? And then take that next step from there. Yeah, absolutely. And that is the basis on which we started Sri Vera was on that, that, that purpose. You know, there's so many ways. Uh, I love one of the analogies you provided me was, you know, there's so many ways to get from Los Angeles to New York. You know, what's your, what's the intention? Do you want to see all the national parks? Do you want to check out all the IHOPs? Do you, you know, do you want to get there the fastest? Do you want to, uh, you know, go f- uh, explore all the northern parts? Is it the southern parts? You know, there's so many different ways. Uh, do you want to see certain states? Do you not want to see certain states? There's no wrong way to get from LA to New York. It's only a perspective in terms of what is your goal? What is your intention? What are you seeking out of it? Mm-hmm. And so if we can approach faith from that same standpoint and say, you know, we're not going to yell at someone because they want to get to New York the fastest when I just wanted to eat pancakes along the way. You know, it's how like, how dare you get there fast? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, that just doesn't even make sense. And if we can play that same kind of concept be like, wow, okay, you know, that's cool. Like that's, if you want to set a record, then awesome. I can't wait to see that. You know, or if you want to see every national park, amazing. Send me the pictures. Like, I can't wait to explore that with you. I may only want to just explore all the, and, and just knock back those pancakes, crush some pancakes the whole way through, exactly. you know, and that's great. And I'll share what that experience is like, but you know, they all can coexist beautifully and they can, they can be, it can be joyous and there can be levity around it. And, you know, there can be, you know, we're all probably going to experience a flat tire here or you know, there'll be a detour or a road will be closed. We'll have to figure out a new way. We'll take wrong turns <laughs> and we'll, fail seriously yes. but yeah but you know maybe the person who was going the fastest might have have caught a way where we happen to on our way of the ihop you know we meet up meet up and find that same you know they because they already knew they already went through then they can let me know oh well that detour you know that you can go this way now and that's going to help you get to where you want to go oh that's awesome you know and i think that's what we can do with faith and that's what we're attempting to do with suivera here is to provide that space and know that there are so many different ways we can learn and grow from each other in the process it doesn't mean that we have to do exactly what everyone else is doing that we can we can lovingly be ourselves and hold space for the coexistence of other approaches too and they can fuel us and we can fuel them and then we can all grow together through that. And that as a whole creates a greater exp- expansion of consciousness for humanity. And that to me, whether you believe in God or not, that is, that is love. That is what it means to be a creator. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's very exciting. I love it. I love it. <laughs> And if you would like to know more about the organization Suivera, which brings you the Heart Leader podcast, you can feel free to click on a link that we'll provide down below. It is Suivera, S-U-I-V-E-R-A dot org. You can check out everything that we have to offer there. And we are just so grateful to have you here with us on the Heart Leader podcast. We have so much out here to check out i don't even know how many episodes we have at this point in other videos but and things to listen to if you're listening to us but definitely worth going back in the archives and checking some of those out until next time 